an 80 foot structure in California because this exam is for the California PE. Uh, it has a special concrete bearing wall system and a special moment resisting steel frame along one direction. Which value of R, our response modification coefficient, should be used for the design of the structure? We got a little figure up above, it's 80 feet tall, call it, you know, seven stories at like 12 feet or something like that. Or maybe it's like six stories and it's like 15 feet tall. Doesn't matter. Another figure that I drew that is not critical to this example problem, but just to broaden our reach of, you know, real life scenarios that we're tying this to. I did a plan view cross section, you know, looking down something like this at our vertical lateral system from a plan view. And when I read having both special steel moment frames as well as uh, special concrete shear walls, I think of something more classically like uh, having those concrete shear walls at your elevator cores in the center of your building, nice rigid, you know, centrally located on your structure's plan. And then around the perimeter, you might have your special steel moment frames allowing the flexibility to have those open views where you have, you know, your glass windows all around so that people can see out, giving you that flexibility to the architects, but still supplying lateral resistance to your structure. If you've been following along with my previous examples, you're gonna start by asking yourself, is this a component? Is this a non-building structure? Is this a building structure? Today, we know this is a building structure, which means you're gonna find yourself in chapter 12. Let's go. Specifically here today, they're talking about design criteria related to our vertical lateral system. So in its most basic form, we're gonna to head to our favorite table, 12-2-1. Looks something like this. It's at the beginning of chapter 12, and it has all of that good critical info for the start of any type of building design for um, for a seismic application. So know it, learn it, live it, all right? Let's grab our R values, our response modification coefficients for both of the vertical lateral system types. So our concrete special reinforced shear wall and our special steel moment frame. Special reinforces here underneath a bearing wall system. But if you didn't see that right off the rip, you went down to building frames, you will see special reinforced concrete shear walls are also present here. Two different spots, oh no, what do we do? Or, hmm, maybe their criteria is all just the same, right? Uh, well, nope, that would be incorrect. Everything is the same besides the R value. So in this problem, they make you think. You need to be paying attention that they specified, spe they specified specifically that it was a bearing wall, shear wall system. So that means we're gonna be using an R of five. For our moment frames, we're gonna scroll down to their own section, C, moment resisting frame systems, and we will see steel, and make sure that you're getting the correct one, special, intermediate, ordinary. Today we are special, that's the first one, which is gonna land us with an R of eight. I believe eight is the largest number you can get for a response modification coefficient R, um, and that's because a steel special moment frame is incredibly ductile, which means it's just inherently can get the crap beat out of it in uh, a major seismic event. And it can yield, it can dissipate energy, and it can perform really, really well, which means high level thinking, you get to scale down your seismic design forces by that larger number, meaning you get to design for lesser demand on your structure. We have our values and we can just head out of here, right? Well, if you're savvy enough and you're looking further down on the screen, you'll see that there may be some other sections of interest. Let's talk about them. I'm of course talking about section D and section E. Dual systems with special moment frames capable of resisting at least 25% of prescribed seismic force. Section E is the same thing, only with intermediate moment frames instead of special moment frames. Um, that sounds an awful light, lot like the system that I was talking about earlier. You have your concrete core with your moment frame system wrapping around the building. Why can't we take advantage of these or should we be considering these? You do have the ability as the engineer to design your structure so that your moment frames uh, are designed to take at least 25% of the design seismic force, which means in our case, we have the special moment frames, we would fall into this D category and can take advantage of this criteria, specifically an R of eight. But the problem today didn't specify any of that information, whether the frames do or do not hit that 25% threshold, 
which means we don't want to be making assumptions. You never want to be making assumptions in the PE exam. They will, unless they mess up a problem, give you all the info required for you to make the correct you know, journey through the code path without having to just guess on something and say, well, uh, I guess they're, get, they're leaving it up to me. They're not going to do that, or they shouldn't be doing that. Uh, we can't confidently say that we fall into this section here. So instead, we're going to remain with our two independent systems, uh, the shear walls at five, because they're bearing system, and the special moment frames at eight. Now, you're like, well, how do you use two R values to design your structure? Or if you have a dual system, all of a sudden you're just using one R value. Um, let's move a little bit further past these tables and the, the later sections of this chapter will explain. Just after those tables, you have a lot of great sections that you should be reviewing for your exam. They give you subsections about alternative structural systems, and then they push forward to talk about mixing and matching of all sorts of vertical lateral systems. So specifically, you see combination of framing systems in different directions. So if you had concrete shear walls that I'm drawing horribly going in that direction, and then you had moment frames just in the, we'll call it page east-west direction, you'd have to look into this subsection. Moving forward some more, combination of framing systems in the same direction. That is us here today. So let's read further. Where different seismic force resisting systems are used in combination to resist seismic forces in the same direction, other than those combinations considered as dual systems, all right, so they're referring back to the conversation that we just had, the most stringent applicable structural system limitations contained in table 1221, where we just were, shall apply and the design shall comply with the requirements of this section. So we need to use the most stringent applicable structural system limitations. In our case here today, they're talking about our R value. Well, your R value at a high level, we know ultimately scales down our seismic design force because our V equals uh, you know, our, our seismic mass times C sub S and then our C sub S in most cases equals it's like SDS over uh, R over I. So the R is on the denominator, which means you're dividing out, um, which is creating a smaller and smaller C sub S, the larger and larger your R value gets. The larger your R value, the smaller your C sub S. And now that your C sub S multiplies by your seismic mass, the smaller the seismic design force. Big R, smaller seismic design force. Little r, bigger seismic design force. So with that knowledge, the most stringent applicable structural system limitations means the smaller r is what we need to use to design our system. Now with all that said, this might not be intuitive enough for you. Well, I want to spell it out even more so that you are aware of all of the different areas where you can obtain this information. So you'll notice we started in 12 to three. Well, it goes on to have subsections of this section. 12231 talks about vertical combinations. 12232 talks about two stage analysis, which is a type of vertical combination, depending if you hit uh, certain criteria for your building structure. And then 12233, horizontal combinations, which is, again, that's something we do have today. So you can head to this section as well and read the following. The value of the response modification coefficient R used for design in the direction under consideration shall not be greater than the least value of R for any of the systems used in that direction. So again, the value of R for the moment frames may be around the perimeter and then the core on the inside for the shear walls of an R of five, you need to use the least value of R. It spits it out to you right there. You don't have to back out in your brain like I just did prior. And that'll do it for today. Thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for interacting in all the ways that you have. 2024 has been a great year for the channel. We've seen a lot of growth, interacted with a lot of you out there, a lot of aspiring engineers and practicing engineers already in the field. Thank you always for keeping me updated with your passing of your exams. I always like to see that. It's a huge milestone for each and every one of you. So really proud of you. Keep on grinding out there. All of you make it worthwhile. So appreciate each and every one of you. 
uh, and I will catch you in the year 2025. This is Rich with Team Kesteva. Peace.